there was a tryout um, in February at Colorado Springs for the USA 2 uh, volleyball program, and it's kind of the farm system for our Olympic team. So it's a, a, what they call a pipeline program where we uh, try to identify and develop talent that hopefully eventually will be, uh, be able to help our uh, national team, Olympic team in an Olympic year. So we, uh, we gathered in Columbus, Ohio at Ohio Dominican University uh, for nine days uh, where we had a lot, of, a lot of fun but a lot of work. Um, 48 um, players became four teams, eight coaches, and uh, spent three or four days training, had a little draft, and then played five days of matches. So it was uh, a busy nine days, but uh, enjoyable and rewarding at the same time. And this is actually your second stint with USA Volleyball. I know you served as an assistant coach back in 95. Tell me a little bit how USA Volleyball as a program, as the way they train, has evolved from, from your first stint until this past year. Yeah, 95 was a youth national team uh, experience, so it was a little younger group. Um, but on that group, uh, we had some pretty talented players. You know, Carrie Walsh was part of that group, so she's going for her third gold medal on, on the sand this Olympics. Uh, but we trained for a couple weeks uh, there and then went overseas for competition. So it was a little different in that regard. Uh, so there's a little different uh, uh, value to that experience. But uh, this experience allowed us to stay in one gym, train a bunch, and develop kids a little bit more, have a little more practice time, uh, and then uh, go from there. So uh, we stayed at home. Uh, the experience wasn't quite as long, but probably a little bit more packed into the nine days that we had in Columbus. During those nine days, I know you said you, you started off the week training pretty hardcore and then you turned around and started playing matches after your draft. I mean, sometimes up to five matches a day, as, if I understand right. Right. How, uh, how work intensive was that schedule just around the clock? Well, we, uh, we uh, did some individual work first and we tried to get to know the kids a little bit. Um, so after three days, we did a, a coach's draft, which was a lot of fun. And then the, the goal was to play everybody equally. and. Uh, uh, we trained and, and played matches where everybody got an equal opportunity to play, where the outcome wasn't all that important. So the first three days uh, was just that, some pool play. In the last two days, we put them in, in a bracket play where uh, we ramped it up a little bit and the stakes got a little bit higher and the coaches got a little bit more uh, intense and a little bit more uh, competitive. Um, and, and that was fun too to see that develop. And, and for our team, especially the white team, uh, kind of come together and, and grow each and every day and, and get better each and every day and play some good volleyball at the end was pretty exciting. Now I know Team USA White, which is the one that you were coaching, after that pool play, like you said, when you're exploring and, and figuring out how we're going to use all your girls, you lose those first three pool play matches, your last seed, now you're working your way up. Then there's some, some coaching involved in there of, of how we're going to turn this around. Well, we were two and seven in, in sets uh, in our first three days. And uh, once again, we knew that we were getting a little bit better and we needed to put some pieces together. So uh, Coach Lizzie from Georgia and myself, uh, um, we just put the onus on the kids mostly. Hey, get a little bit better each day, contribute a little more than you consume. And uh, we knew we, we finished with some momentum, momentum that last pool play day. And uh, that I think that carried over to the next day into the semis where we actually beat the number one seed and then on into the finals where you know we won a match 3-0 that we pretty much uh, dominated from start to finish. Obviously, there's high-level volleyball going on all over the top 48 kids around the country. We had a couple of girls who were right on the cusp of, of that invite. Um, these are girls you compete against. You see them on an everyday basis at the high-level conference like the Big 12. Uh, talk about some of the girls that you saw while you are out there. Yeah, I mean, we uh, had some of the top players uh, from the country. And it was interesting. The first um, group meeting we had, Tom Pinkle, who's the development of the pipeline, uh, or director of the pipeline, said, hey, one of you will probably be on our next Olympic team. And that got everybody's attention right away. Um, so that was interesting. But, uh, you know, we saw a kid from Minnesota, uh, maybe was the top prospect at the, at the camp that we saw uh, in the fall, Tori Dixon. And there was a number of Big 12 players involved. And, uh, and I know our kids, we had some in our gym that uh, could have uh, could have been right, at, right there. So hopefully in the future, this is a program that some of our kids can be involved in. Not only the athletes, I know only eight coaches were selected from across the country to participate when you're working with some of the country's elite. How was that? Um, it was fun. Um, you know, on July 1st, I told Wayne from uh, Missouri, hey, you're no longer in our conference, so uh, get lost. So that was kind of interesting when, when he went from the Big 12 to the SEC during this uh, little deal. But uh, it was good to sit down with him in an environment that wasn't so competitive. Uh, I really enjoyed working with uh, Lizzie from Georgia, who uh, 
uh, has a, actually played a little bit with USA Volleyball uh, back in her playing days. And then Jeff Stork, who was our Olympic, Olympian on our 88 gold medal team, was one of the coaches there. So some of the stories he shared about his experiences uh, playing in front of 40,000 fans in an outdoor match in uh, Sao Paulo, Brazil, and some of the other things that, uh, that he saw at the uh, international level was pretty priceless. So we had a lot of good uh, opportunity downtime after the, the evening sessions were done to talk about volleyball. So that's rewarding. Um, and you can learn from each other in that scenario, so that was fun. Was it pretty cool, somebody that, that in the volleyball world is, is such a big name as Jeff Stork that was pretty down to earth when you finally got the chance to sit down and, and chat with him? Very down to earth. And uh, he talked to the team one night, and um, he's very humble, doesn't blow his own horn much. And I just stopped his conversation and said, hey, do you guys realize that in 88, this guy was the best setter in the world? And then, uh, you know, he, he didn't want any of that glory or acclaim, but it was important for our players to understand that he was one of the world's best when he was playing. And, and Dietrich Collins from, uh, from University of uh, San Diego State uh, had played in two Olympics. Um, so we had a number of former Olympians there that had a lot of stories to share. So that was unique. And it being an Olympic year and why we were there, uh, Hugh McCutcheon selected our Olympic team, um, which, uh, you know, our, the pool for our Olympic team was deeper than ever. Um, was, was kind of cool, all that was going on while we were training. So. With all this volleyball going on, it looks like y'all still had the chance to give back. I know that I got a picture from you from the Ronald McDonald House over in Columbus. Um, a little community service effort while you were over there. Yeah, we did. And, um, you know, we were dragging our feet a little bit because we had a match that afternoon. But at 1 o'clock when we pulled into the Ronald McDonald House and some of the parents and some of the kids that, uh, you know, are staying there, uh, they have a great uh, uh, children's hospital right across the street. And the Ronald McDonald House serves a, a great purpose for those kids. And our players jumped right in to, to do what they could to comfort parents and kids and get involved in any way they could. So that was very rewarding, and, and we enjoyed that uh, opportunity. No rest for the weary. Camp starts right up again tomorrow. <laughs> it's, it's, it's summertime's never break time, right? Well, it, uh, summer's over pretty much now. But, uh, uh, you know, it, it didn't come at a great time with camps coming up, but it, it was an opportunity. Uh, to me grow professionally, personally, and to give back a little bit to USA Volleyball, that's meant a lot to me. So it was a win-win situation.